Hi friends, if you like this video, please subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you. Hi friends, my name is Vanindra Gupta. So in this video, let us discuss about biosynthesis of cholesterol. So before entering into this biosynthesis cholesterol, firstly you have to know what is the structure of the cholesterol. So if you see here, this will be the structure of cholesterol and the molecular form of this cholesterol is C27H46O. That's nothing but it consists of totally 27 carbons in the structure of the cholesterol. So all of these are carbons which I have mentioned over here with numbers. And if you see here, there will be double bond between this fifth carbon and sixth carbon. Okay. And at the third carbon, there will be the presence of hydroxyl group. So in this way, the formation of cholesterol uh, structure takes place. So the molecular formula of cholesterol is C27H46O. So this is the basic information on this cholesterol. So now let us learn the biosynthesis of cholesterol. Okay. So now normally this biosynthesis of cholesterol takes place at the site of small intestine and large intestine, liver and adrenal cortex region. So if you see now, let us start with biosynthesis of cholesterol. And the biosynthesis of cholesterol starts with two molecules of acetyl CoA coenzyme two molecules of acetyl coenzyme and if you see here this two acetyl coa will lead to the formation of aceto acetyl coa and the enzyme which has been utilized over here is thiolase and during this formation coash will be liberated out and next this aceto acetyl coa will lead to the formation of beta hmg coa and the enzyme which is utilized over here is hmg coa synthase and the full form of hmg is hydroxymethyl glutaryl coa and the enzyme which has been utilized over here is hydroxymethyl glutaryl coa synthase and COSH will be liberated out again okay and from the beta hydro beta hydroxymethyl glutaryl coa what will be formed mevalonate this will be formed mevalonate will be formed and the enzyme which has been utilized over here is hmg coa reductase as the reductase that's nothing but uh, you know the here the process which takes place over here is reduction hence the enzyme which has been utilized over here is reductase okay so as the reductase enzyme has been utilized then NADP for an uh, NADH which is more normally utilized so it may lead to the formation of NADP which has been liberated out and then it leads to the formation of mevalonate okay and next this mevalonate undergoes three kinds of processes if you see here these are the three kinds of processes and within these three kinds of processes three different types of uh, you know result will be takes place if you see here in each of the in each of the reaction ATP will be utilized and the kinase will be the enzyme which has been utilized uh, within these three of the reactions and within the first reaction of this mevalonate the formation of the formation of 5 prime phospho mevalonate takes place this is the 5 prime phospho mevalonate which is shortly abbreviated as 5 prime PMV okay and this is the formation takes place at the first reaction of the mevalonate with the kinase and coming to the second reaction both ATP and kinase will be utilized over here ATP is the energy and kinase will be the enzyme which has been utilized over here and from this 5 PMV the formation of 5 prime pyrophospho mevalonate takes place okay and it is shortly abbreviated as 5 prime PPMV okay pyrophospho PP and next in this third reaction of the mevalonate there will be the formation of 3 phospho 5 prime pyrophospho mevalonate okay and here also the ATP energy will be utilized and the kinase enzyme will also be get utilized and there will be the formation of 3 phospho pi 5 prime pyrophospho mevalonate right and from here there will be the formation of isopentenyl pyrophosphate which is a 5 carbon compound and here decarboxylation process takes place you know the decarboxylation is nothing but releasing of carbon dioxide right so here the enzyme which will be utilized in the decarboxylation is decarboxylase and here carbon dioxide will be exhibited out and the formation of isopentenyl pyrophosphate takes place and this isopentenyl pyrophosphate is 5 carbon compound okay and next this isopentenyl pyrophosphate which is 5 carbon compound undergoes reaction to form dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate which is again 5 carbon compound and the enzyme which has been utilized over here is isomerase okay and from here dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate utilize, utilizes isopentenyl pyrophosphate and here so it utilizes both so this this uh, dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate and isopentenyl pyrophosphate will get combined with each other that's nothing but 5 carbon plus 5 carbon it mainly forms girinyl pyrophosphate and this is the 10 carbon compound 5 carbon compound plus 5 carbon compound both of these will get combined together this arrow mark indicates that itself 
isopentanyl iso pyrophosphate will get uh, combined with the dimethyl allyl pyrophosphate to form urinyl pyrophosphate which is a 10 carbon compound 5 carbon compound plus 5 carbon compound and now if you see here this urinyl pyrophosphate which is a 10 carbon compound will again utilizes this isopentanyl pyrophosphate this arrow mark indicates this isopentanyl pyrophosphate here so this urinyl pyrophosphate will get added with isopentanyl pyrophosphate which is a 5 carbon compound so if you see at this urinyl pyrophosphate is 10 carbon compound and this is the 5 carbon compound over here right so 10 carbon compound plus 5 carbon compound it mainly forms 15 15 carbon compound and the name of the compound is ferronyl pyrophosphate okay it is a 15 carbon compound and next ferronyl pyrophosphate utilizes an enzyme known as squalene synthase to form squalene okay squalene so as the formation of squalene takes place, the enzyme which will be utilized over here will be squalene synthase and here NADPH will be utilized over here, okay? And here not only NADPH but also oxygen will also get utilized, oxygen, oxygen will also get utilized and here squalene, here also both NADPH as well as oxygen will be utilized and here in yeah, and here this squalene will lead to the formation of lanosterol and this lanosterol will lead to the formation of cholesterol and if you see here this ferronyl pyrophosphate is 15 carbon compound and here this lanosterol is 13 carbon compound and here in the process of this lanosterol uh, in the sorry in the formation of cholesterol from the lanosterol what happens is the liberation of hcooh uh, you know one of the carboxyl unit will get liberated out along with the carboxylyl unit co2 two molecules of carbon dioxide will also get liberated out so if you see here how many carbons has been liberated out two carbons two co2 is nothing but two carbons plus one of the carbon over here so 30 minus 3 normally two carbons over here and the carbon totally three carbons right 30 minus 3 27 so cholesterol is a 27 carbon compound which we have seen in the previous structure in the structure we have seen the right it is a 27 carbon compound which i have said you before itself so in this way 27 carbon compound of cholesterol will be formed from the lanosterol okay so this is about the biosynthesis of cholesterol and forgot to say here one thing and here also oxygen will be utilized so along with the oxygen nadph will also get utilized okay so in this way the formation of cholesterol takes place which is a 27 carbon compound so this is about biosynthesis of cholesterol so if you like this video, please do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box so I will clarify your doubts immediately.